Hello world. I've given up coffee and I have transferred over to matcha. Hello loves, welcome back. Riley has something to say. Riley doesn't know how to be alone. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about how I have managed to emotionally detach myself. I know that the world struggles with detaching, but I think I don't even think it's that. I think the world struggles with more so a problem of avoidance rather than detaching. And the difference is like, I'm avoiding things. I'm not going to acknowledge things. I'm just kind of going to totally pretend it's not a problem and just ignore it. Whereas detaching is acknowledging your attachment to the problem, to the issue, to the emotion, to the person. At the end of the day like you have no control over your attachments whether they're like put, like material possessions or it's a person or a relationship or a job like you have no control over anything so the best thing that you could do for yourself and your mental health and your emotional well-being is to literally just like practice detachment i also wanted to talk about how i've become so comfortable being alone i used to be a huge codependent when i was younger like starting off when i was 14 I went through a really bad breakup and I remember like, the emotions that I felt after that breakup were so fucking intense and like obviously I didn't have the emotional guidance from my mom. Like as an adult I understand now why she couldn't show up for me in that time and obviously my dad is absent in my life, always has been absent in my life. So you know that breakup triggered not just like the breakup itself and like the detachment from this person and like the hurt of like my boyfriend. 14 year old my 15 year old boyfriend le leaving me like abandoned me all of a sudden um which is a pattern that played out in many many like relationships i know he'll never abandon me brooke was actually a part of that breakup so she's been with me for seven years now and i'm sure she is proud of how much i have grown but anyways so that breakup didn't just trigger like oh, it's just a relationship that has ended. It actually triggered a lot of my abandonment wounds, which I think which I think is the reason why it was so fucking painful because I remember literally like this person broke up with me and then like I was in bed, just like could not get out of bed. I was just crying nonstop. Thankfully, my friends were able to like get me out of bed and like help me out and you know they were there for me they showed they showed up for me in the ways that they could you know we were, i was only 15 so obviously it wasn't through like oh like giving me advice and helping me move on it was more so distracting me but you know at the end of the day it did help me out so anyways yeah that definitely did trigger um abandonment wounds for my father's absence but i wasn't aware that it was doing that but now as an adult i'm like oh that's probably why it was so painful because it was triggering a wound within me that i have not that I hadn't even recognized yet you know like I knew my dad wasn't present and yes there were times where I was like confused on that but um I never fully dove into it in with the intention of healing that wound years later I dated somebody else whom I was also very attached to and very codependent on and that person on me as well we were both very codependent on each other we kind of had similar stories of like daddy issues and stuff i remember expressing to that boyfriend i have separation anxiety and anytime that we're like apart i get this anxiety that's really terrible I remember that person being like you're just a spoiled brat and i was like okay i kind of dug a, a deeper wound within me because it's like i'm expressing myself and this person obviously couldn't see me i don't blame him we were only 18 years old 19 years old so i was like you know like what could i expect he wasn't emotionally intelligent i wasn't emotionally like aware i would like we were just like not in a good place to be having those mature conversations of like well this is how i'm feeling how we're we gonna deal with it how we're we gonna move through it blah blah right it wasn't until i moved to san antonio that i started becoming much more emotionally independent i'm sorry emotionally independent and aware of like my patterns and stuff like that when i had my spiritual awakening is when i started really becoming more aware of my thoughts my emotions i started recognizing what i liked to do whereas before it was like you know like 
I'm not judging anybody who does things like this because we've all been there and we're all going to be there because we're young. Um, even if we're like an older generation as well, like I know that this, there's nothing wrong with partying and like, you know, going out and stuff. But you move to college and the thing that you're going to see the most and experience the most is partying and going out and like being with boys or being with girls and like, you know, all that stuff. That's the most ordinary thing to see, right? So that's exactly what I was doing when I moved to college, when I moved to San Antonio. And then when I had my spiritual awakening, like I remember weeks before I had my spiritual awakening, I was literally going through a really devastating loss, which is too personal to talk about. But I was going through a really big loss in my life and it really, really moved something within me. <sighs> I remember being in my car crying and just like pleading and praying to god like please help me i don't know what i'm doing with my life i don't know where i'm going mind you at this point in my life i was smoking a lot of weed i had like done all these things already um and thankfully like what i did brought me closer to my spirituality and closer to myself because i know that there's two ways of going about that like some people some people do these psychedelics and they go down a path of like wanting more and like maybe doing intense drugs like you know crack and heroin and all that stuff but thankfully that didn't happen to me i was able to really get a hold of myself and become more aware so anyways when i prayed to god that day in my car my life just did a whole like 360 like the relationship that i was in at that time in my life ended immediately um i remember it was near the end of a lease that i had at my student apartment and i literally just like abandoned all the friends that i had at that point because i remember having a conversation with one of the friends that i thought were like my real friends you know these are these were all very superficial friendships and i was like having this spiritual awakening right and i was like you know like if you've had a spiritual awakening you know what i'm talking about if you haven't this is kind of what happens um you start questioning like what the fuck life is you start questioning like how everything is working you start questioning like there's just so many questions that come to the surface where it's like i'm not just seeing things from this reality i'm seeing things from like an energetic unseen reality now so i was having all these questions and all these like conflicting thoughts in my head and like i remember trying to talk to my current friends about it and they would just kind of like shut me up shut me up and tell me like oh like the point of life is just to live and party so just let's just go party and I was like, I'm going through a lot right now. And the best way that you could be there for me is to tell me to party. No. And like my intuition, that's when I started like paying more attention to my intuition. I was like, this doesn't feel right. Like at that time, I, like I said, I was going through a really major loss in my life. So I started listening to them and I started drowning myself in alcohol and like partying and just like avoidance. And so then after that, like I had this intuition that was kind of telling me like, stop, like, detached from them so that's what i did i stopped talking to all these people that i was friends with and i maybe kept like one or two friends whom i felt i was closer to in a way um but the rest of them were just like out of my life completely and i i did not feel bad about it at all weeks after i prayed to god and had this like crisis in my life i had my spiritual awakening and it this is exactly how it happens i literally just woke up one day and maybe not for everybody but this is how it happened for me i woke up one day and i was like i want tarot cards and i wanted to just explore that side of like life i guess and like spirituality and then like all of a sudden because there was because the pandemic hit in 2020 i wanted to just go on the trails so i started going on the trails like daily with my dog riley and we would just go out there and I just felt so much bliss like I had never felt my whole life before. Part of the reason why I am so comfortable with being alone is because I have been in a very dark place where I was surrounded by people that I thought loved me and cared for me. And after these people exited my life and I started finding more of who I am and more of the things that give me peace, um, I started choosing that I stopped choosing stimulation I stopped choosing fake friendships superficial friendships I stopped choosing people who weren't choosing me who weren't valuing me I stopped choosing the life that is ordinary and I started asking myself what does happiness what does peace mean to me 
for me it looked like going out on trails painting you know i started painting. literally everything just like happened all at once like i had my spiritual awakening and then i started feeling like okay i want to go on the trail today okay i want to go paint today okay i want to make music today i started figuring out who i was for the first time ever in my fucking life i kid you guys not like like i had never had that safe space of being truly and wholeheartedly myself i didn't know who i was for the longest time because at my house my mom was emotionally unavailable and my brother was a very my brother was very um my brother was very toxic to me and very emotionally abusive to me so i never had that safe space of really expressing myself like i remember me singing like you know obviously i'm a fucking musician so like my sometimes i annoy myself because i'm like oh my god can i shut up you know i remember like singing sometimes and like my brother telling me to just like shut up like you know and yeah some people might be like okay why the fuck do you take it to heart i don't know like, that's just who i am i recognize that i'm a very sensitive person because i treat people with such respect and like if anybody ever comes to me and shows me their creativity their art whatever it is they're showing me i have the most respect for artists and creators because i know what it's like to be one and i know that it's very hard to trust yourself sometimes especially if you didn't have the support emotionally um growing up i think that's why i'm a sensitive person because i treat people with so much love and i give them so much support that whenever i don't get that back it hurts me and i used to guilt myself over it like why did i feel this way why am i so sensitive about things you know but now i'm like no it's okay to feel that like i deserve relationships that are gonna nurture me back and if you don't nurture me back fuck you <laughs> um nah not fuck you well yeah kind of but like like i'm just like eh, whatever like you're just not for me that's it like i'm not gonna try to control and i used to be this controlling ass person of like you're not giving me the support you're not like in relationships in friendships i used to be this person like even with my family too i used to be that person that like well, you're not supporting me. Like, why aren't you supporting me? Blah, 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 blah. I make a big fuss about it. And now I'm like, literally, I don't give a fuck. I'm doing it without expectations because it genuinely makes me happy. That's a little bit of my story. Even though I'm comfortable being alone, there are days that are very emotionally and mentally challenging for me. Yesterday was one of those days. Obviously, I just lost my mother eight months ago. And that has been the hardest thing to accept. And especially like living alone now, I am grieving, I think, a little more and it's become a little more difficult to navigate through those emotions because I don't have, you know, before I was living alone, I was living with my grandparents and before I was living with my grandparents, I was living with my ex-partner. So I was never really fully aware of how I was feeling because there was always somebody else to consider, whether it was my ex-partner or my grandparents, you know, like I always had this other energy in the household that I had to like, whether I wanted to or not, pay attention to. So now that I'm completely living alone, like I'm fully aware of every single moment that I'm feeling like grief or I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling angry or I'm feeling overwhelmed or frustrated or whatever it is I'm feeling. So it's about like, in order to really detach and feel comfortable being alone, you genuinely have to accept that you're gonna have terrible days you're gonna have hard fucking days where you can distract yourself all you want but that emotion is gonna linger on it's gonna stay with you and you have to really take time to sit with yourself and ask yourself what's going on what am i grieving right now what am i resisting right now what am i feeling overwhelmed about what am i feeling angry about that emotion's gonna linger on it's gonna carry it's gonna carry such a huge weight on you unless you sit with it so yesterday for example was such a yesterday was a really hard day for me i didn't see anybody the whole day i stayed alone at the apartment and i was having so much resistance i wanted to just keep moving around i wanted to just do 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 be productive you know focus on the podcast editing videos blah 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 that i was making it worse on myself so finally at around six o'clock i went to sit out on the balcony and i just accepted that i was gonna feel these things so now i want to explain a little bit about how to detach and why detachment is very healthy honestly meditation has 
allowed me to detach because when you're in a meditative state and I know that meditation is like very diverse you know like you could be looking outside and be meditating in that moment you could be playing the piano and meditating like everybody has their different ways of meditating but the meditation that I'm talking about is the actual meditation that like you know uh, you see in Buddhism sitting cross-legged and keeping your back straight and just breathing and focusing on what thoughts come up focusing on what emotions come up because when you have at, at the beginning of meditation if you are somebody that's new to meditation you will identify yourself with the thoughts that you're having and especially if you've never meditated and you've been through childhood trauma that trauma is going to come up for you and it's going to be really hard sometimes to move through it but that's part of the process you have to cry it out you have to scream it out you have to acknowledge it you have to move that energy that has been stagnant in your body for so long because it's going to come up for you when you're meditating you have finally reached a moment of stillness where you're not externally doing other things and that's why for some people it's very hard to meditate because they have been through really fucked up shit it's really hard to acknowledge this trauma right so sitting down with yourself meditating and letting whatever comes up come up um, I would suggest that if you've been through trauma to maybe work with a therapist or work with a meditation instructor Work with a spiritual teacher. You don't have to do it by yourself. There's always help. So at the beginning of meditation, you might feel like You might feel like you are the trauma You might feel like you are this person that has been through all these things and yes for the most part you are But as you practice more and more and more and more and more you become the observer so you're not the thought anymore. You're not the emotion. You're not the trauma. You are simply observing because you're in your present state, right? So right now, I would be meditating, for example, right now, right? And what would come up for me would probably be my mother's death because that is the most recent trauma that I've had. But I would remind myself that I am witnessing from a place of presence. I'm not witnessing from a place of, I am still in this area of, I just lost my mom. Even though, yes, I did, it's very recent, I have reached a level of like awareness where it's like, if these emotions want to come up, if this trauma wants to replay in my head, if this, if this like, whatever needs to come to the surface, I'm going to let it rise, but I'm going to be the watcher. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just going to observe it. The emotion is going to come through me and I'm going to feel it and I'm going to either cry it out or I'm just going to watch it as it sits in my body, as it sits in my heart. And then I'm going to breathe it out, right? So you are the observer. You're not, you're not the trauma. You're not the, you're not what happened to you. You're not your thoughts. You're not your emotions. You are simply the observer and that's it. So I would suggest meditation if you are trying to detach from people. I think so often in relationships, we start merging into our partners and we start to forget our sense of self. Meditation has always brought me back to me where I'm like, okay, this is a moment for me. I'm forgetting that this person even exists as ugly as I may sound to some people. I'm forgetting that my partner exists right now. This is my world. Cause at the end of the day, I have to take care of myself. I have to make sure that I'm thinking of me. What do I need? What do I want? What do I need to focus on? And that in meditation gives me that detachment.